Okay, so we are back. We're going to be doing another one of our delightfully dark discussions. It's me and Alana here, and today we are going to be talking about working with Mammon. He is one of the most transformational dark lords I have ever personally worked with. Mammon is the reason I'm here right now, where I am in my life, and he is the reason that... I basically have gone from where I was to running a successful business that continues to grow and thrive every year. And it's all because of the guidance and wisdom that he has instilled in me. And Alana's here with us, and she's also had experiences with Mammon. Why yes. don't you share us or share with us um, your experiences with him? Well, it was pretty intense, actually. I He approached me because I kind of wanted to work with him, and he said if I did want to work with him... I would have to set up an altar. And at that time, I had heard what working with him was like, and I just, I was not ready. I was like, there's no way I'm setting up an altar. I will set an altar up when I'm ready. Now is not the time because I had a lot of things shifting in my life already just from working with the demons I was working with at that time. And I ended up accidentally setting up an altar because um, some people might know that I did leave an abusive relationship and I had no furniture. So I was out shopping for furniture and I saw this beautiful table and I thought, wow, this would be the perfect altar table for Mammon. So I purchased it, I brought it home, I set it up completely forgetting that he had said, when you're ready to work with me, set it up. And after I set it up, my life just completely fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> when I um, started working with Mammon, my mentor at the time advised me to work with him and said, you know, Mammon is life changing. He's absolutely amazing to work with. And I was like, I really am not happy where I am. I want to change my life. I want to, you know, I had all these dreams, these visions, these goals that I wanted to attain with no conceivable way to make them happen. So I took my mentor's advice and I approached Mammon. Now I he did not respond to the first um, invocation I did for him. I had another demon show up who basically told me what I would have to do in order to have Mammon work with me, which was set up um, a very specific altar, set up a very specific system. I had um, to make my own ritual. I had to I had to find a way to pro approach him in a very respectful way, but I did it. I did it because I really wanted to work with Mammon and also that experience in itself was quite amazing. So I followed his advice and I set up this altar. I did this grand physical invocation. You know, I had like all the offerings. I had all the physical manifestation points. It was quite the ritual and he did show up and it was it blew me away and all, all he did for the first meeting was basically warn me of how hard it was going to be and then give me a giant reading list that I had to read. So I had a lot of homework to do when I worked with him. And I did that. I followed his advice. I read the books. I, I And it was... And it felt like at times that nothing was really coming together. I'd get little snippets of things. I'd get little, you know, impressions. But I never, I, I was having such a hard time pulling it together. Then he, he got me into this position where I ended up working with some pretty powerful people. And he told me just to watch them. He told me just to watch them and observe them and learn from them and learn and basically absorb myself in their energies and start to try to see the world from their perspective. And so I did that and still it felt like nothing was working. I was so frustrated. I remember thinking I was like, I don't get how nothing can be working. I don't get how everything can be falling apart this way. I, I don't get why nothing is coming together. And he, he kept telling me that it was my mindset that was wrong. It was, um, where I was directing my focus, where my energies were going, all of the stuff was basically impacting me and blocking me. And then I remember the day when it all just fell apart, like everything, my entire world crashed. And it crashed and burned so hard. And I remember I was, I actually at times thought Mammon was torturing me. I was, <laughs> you know that feeling. I know that feeling. <laughs> I was like, why are you doing this to me? And he's actually one of the only dark lords I've ever sworn at. and never really, you know, <laughs> I had a few days where I was very angry. I'll admit that. And he actually mocked me during those sessions because I was so, I was so 
emotional and he just kept telling me the same thing he's like well you're wasting energy on this you should be focused on what you want and it's like I don't have money for food. What, what, what are you talking about? Focus on what I want. I want food. I want dinner. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I went through a part of that, too. As um, After I had set up the altar, I didn't realize at first what I had done because I did set it up. I had been buying things and, you know, getting it ready for the perfect moment when I was going to set the altar up. So I had a box of things for ma'am, and then I was like, as soon as I'm ready, I'll set the altar up. Well, somehow I forgot that, that, you know, he... <laughs> Once I set it up, this was going to start. So I I did set up the altar with everything I had gotten. And yeah, the, once everything started, there were days when I, I could not eat because it was so insane. My life just completely crashed too. It's amazing. And I realized looking back on it, it was not him torturing me. It was not him, you know, destroying my life. It was not even me being cursed or me being attacked or anything. What it was, was I was living in a particular reality. I was living in, I had particular views on things. I had, basically my mind was made up on what my reality was and what I was able to attain. And I had a specific way that I, I felt like I was going to attain success. I was like, oh, this is going to happen. It's going to be step one, step two, step three, <laughs> step four. It's going to be all simple and happy and nice. And what I didn't realize is that the reality I was living in was a reality where there was no way I was ever going to be successful because that reality was actually holding me at the vibration I was. There was no way I was ever going to attain success with that mindset. Mm -hmm. So what ended up happening was he destroyed that mindset. He destroyed it and destroyed every last trace of it. He actually like just took my old life and basically like nuked it just blew it up <laughs> yes. and so I'm left with this like basically with nothing I'm left with no attachment nothing except holding on to like the few little things in my life that I wanted to attain I mean a lot of people don't know I was pregnant at the time when this happened so it was the perfect timing too and a lot of people say this was cruel but I was seven months pregnant so getting a job was impossible I mean you go try and apply for a job when you're seven months pregnant they look at you as if you're a leper <laughs> it's true I went to a few job interviews <laughs> I tried and no he was adamant that I needed to shift basically my perspective and do this and that's basically how SNS was formed that's basically how my entire life right now came about is I started I well I stopped looking for the path and I started just doing what I was passionate about mm -hmm. that was what it came down to and you know you manifest the situation you manifest the opportunity and it presented itself and I took it yeah I can relate to that too because I had two particular paths that I wanted to walk at the same time and I was walking the one as an engineer I was an engineer and I thought that was what I wanted to do at the time, but I also knew that I did want to work with demons full time and come out here and work with you as well. So I had been training with you at that time, but I was kind of on hold because engineering had gotten to be so much. They I remember me, that. Yeah. <laughs> they put me on call for two months straight, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The phone would ring and I would have to get immediately on my computer and work. I used to sleep with the laptop in the bed next to me and I'd get calls at like one or two in the morning and I had to get on and fix it. <laughs> and it was two months straight this went on. And after I think I was like a month and a half, almost two months in, I thought this is going to kill me. In fact, I hope I die. I can't do this <laughs> anymore. And this was after setting up the altar because after I set up the altar, that was when they decided to make me lead on a project, and I did get put on call 24-7, and there was nobody else to do it. Nobody else wanted to. You know, you're working with Mammon, and when you reach a point where you just wish death would take you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why is this happening? And it, it was, you asked me, well, if you could do anything in the world, what would you do? And I was like, this is not what I would be doing. And I would go basically live in the middle of nowhere and not have to see anybody anymore because I really at that point did not want to. But um, it made me look at what I really wanted to do because you can't, what I learned from that, from Mammon, from you, from 
the whole experience was I was trying to do two things at once and it the engineering thing it was not my passion it was something I wanted to do it was something I did do I I was able to I achieved that goal but then I got there and it was not what I wanted that's in I had a similar thing because I, I I did enjoyed the the job I had I enjoyed what I was doing I enjoyed the people I worked with mm-hmm. I worked with a guy who conjured Jin. Yeah, he was he, he was a businessman. He was really, you know, he's really he had amazing skills and stuff and he he did all the spiritual stuff on the sides. It was it was amazing working with him and learning from him. So I was really I was really cozy there. I was it was the same thing. I was I was working <laughs> that job and I was also trying to build up this um business on the side where I did want to um, you know, teach people about demons. I did want to do all these things, but I was just so comfortable where I was that there was no way it was ever going to happen. There was no way it was ever going to happen without a change. So, you know, in steps Mammon with his nuclear bomb. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's where you you lost the job for me. I was like, Mm -hmm. I can't do this job anymore. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, it wasn't really, I mean, it wasn't really a job. It was a contract, right? So, well, it kind of all fell apart, but it needed to happen. Yeah. Like it needed to happen. That that was another problem. If it was a job, I could have collected mat leave. If it was a job, oh, I could have collected yes. the AI. I had a contract. Right. So there was nothing. I mean, it basically just ended. And I'm like, all right, I can pawn this and this and oh, this no, and this yeah. and this and this and this. <laughs> and this. And yeah, for three months, I basically pawned so much stuff, which was which was really painful at times. I mean, I remember one thing I pawned. I still am sad about that. It was a, it was a gold cougaran that I had, and I remember looking at it and I was like, my mortgage. <laughs> I I was also it was interesting because I was also carrying two mortgages at the time. I was lucky um, that I was able to manifest the money for all my expenses every month for those three months and I realized in those three months that was how you manifest things I just I got to such levels of desperation that I was willing to push anything in order to you know get this I was willing to Mm -hmm. to push things and I realized um you know that it was possible it was possible for me to manifest these things it was possible for me to to pull things out of places i never even knew were possible and it was possible for me to grow what i wanted to and i realized that was another thing that was holding me back during that time that mammon taught me was because i was clinging to the contract job so strongly i didn't actually have faith that i was going to be able to do it to be able to do it on my own. So being forced to, I was able to step into that, which the lessons that Mammon teaches, I mean, looking back on them, even writing about them, looking back on them, there's so many angles I didn't see, so many things I just, I didn't see at the time that I look back on, I'm like, oh my gosh, he taught me that as well. Mammon teaches in layers. Mammon teaches, everything Mammon does, he teaches in layers. And when you look back on those layers, you see the different layers in his teachings. You see how he's approached things. You see how he set things up in order for you to succeed, if you're willing to succeed. Yeah, that was another thing I experienced too, that if you're willing to succeed, because there was always another choice. There was, well, what do you want? Are you going to do the work to get what you want? Mm-hmm. And it was challenging. And it a few times I was just like, when I was trying to buy a house out here, because I after I decided I didn't want to be an engineer anymore, I was like, that's it. I'm buying a house. I'm moving. I actually had a five-year plan to get out here, and it turned into eight months because I was so just pushed to the limit. I was like, no, this, I cannot do this anymore. If, if I stay here, I'm going to die of an early death from the, the hours I'm working and the stress. But it was not easy. It wasn't just, you know, oh, you get pushed to your limits. You decide you don't want to do this anymore. And now, you know, you get handed something. No, there was a lot of lessons along with it. It was everything I faced really was a challenge. Do you want to get out of the energy vibration that you're in? Are you going to put the effort in? Are you going to learn this? And it felt like it kept building on itself. And I mean that in a positive way as in, you know, I I had a foundation and then it was, I faced one challenge. And when I overcame that, there was another one and things I had faced in the previous one sort of built on themselves and led to the next one. So I had background in things I needed to get to where I wanted to be. 
that's the thing with with growth especially when working with mam and there's it's like while you're growing there's always an obstacle always yes you're being hit by obstacles left right and center and the bigger the goal you ask for the more obstacles you're going to be hit by yes Yes. it's like (laughs) there's the the, that saying be careful what you wish for Mm -hmm. it's so true in this situation because it's like i want to do this okay well what are you willing to do to get that mammon will shift the environment so that you are forced to face all these things that are holding you in this place Yes, he will. He shifts it. He he just like, all right, you want this? Well, I'm going to make it happen, but you are the one that's going to have to grow to claim it. You're the one that's going to have to rise up and take it. I can give you the opportunity, but you have to train yourself to see it, and you have to be able to take it. Yeah, there's a lot of growth working with him. And I know I've heard people who are like, oh, I'm working with Mammon. And then people who are like, I want to work with Mammon. And then they'll they'll come back and be like, my life is falling apart. And it's like, well, you're definitely working with him, it sounds like, because that's been my experience with it. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, uh, and this, is, this has been one thing that's been really challenging, is you can't focus on the destruction. You have to hold course and focus oh, on yes. what you want. It's like, okay, everything's falling apart. Well, I'm, I want this. I want this, and I have to keep going for that. And sometimes it's really hard because, I mean, you get hit with a lot of things. Like there's emotional layers to this. Like mm-hmm. a lot of our emotions, they, they've they set us up so that we are conditioned basically to feel a certain way in this vibration that we're in. So we, we have all these feelings. We have all these perceptions which are basically containing us in this vibration. Yes. In order to step out of that, you have to face those things and be able to leave them behind. Mm -hmm. And that's a really hard thing is leaving a lot of these things behind because these these are things that we become comfortable with. We may not like them, but we're comfortable with them. That's, That's one thing that I have experienced a lot of in this is really stepping outside of my comfort zone. And it's been consistent. I've always, it's like the second I get comfortable, something new comes up. Yes. Like I'm starting to fear the comfort more than the actual (laughs) challenges because it's like "Uh uh-oh I'm comfortable what's gonna happen (laughs) it's like at least if I'm in it I know what's (laughs) happening and I can deal with it yeah if I've actually had times where I've I've even now I still work with mammon and you know I have big goals there are things I want to do and I know that there's gonna be a lot of work to get them done Mm -hmm. and it gets where it gets to a point where it's just like you know you wake up and you had asked for this you you did whatever you needed to do and now it's time to receive it but everything in between getting to where you want to be it's just I'll, I'll have days where I'll wake up and I'll be like well this is happening this is terrible I'm just kind of like expecting it now so it's not I'm not in like this terrible emotional turmoil I'm just like all right what do I need to do to fix this because this isn't gonna stop mm-hmm. and I've been in a different place before where I was like you have to just keep going with it yeah. Well, you have to realize that where you, the vibration you are and the vibration of what you're asking for, that if there's a big difference, your world is going to be shaken up and basically shifted, sometimes in a really harsh and horrific way, as you head towards that new vibration. So yeah. the more, the further away it is, the more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It has to do with earthquakes. The more shaken up your, um, your experience will be like it's going to shake up your world it's going to tremors it's going to oh tremors yes, yes. tremors the more tremors you're going to have yeah on the um on the journey there growth success shifting your vibrations moving in that direction it's an amazing journey but there's a lot of things you've got to face and sometimes it can be a really painful journey and i've I've heard of this of a lot of successful people that they go through a time where their life basically just falls apart. Something happens, something horrific happens, something shakes their world and changes their perspective and causes them to really shift out of where they are. And it's actually, uh, this is one thing I actually like about working with demons is that mammon every shift he's done has affected me my family has been safe in it my family yeah. has been safe in it. i haven't had to deal with personal tragedy which i'm very very grateful for and yes. hope to continue it's always been my inter- internal tragedy my self tragedy mm-hmm. which is one thing i feel working with them has helped with because they do have that that understanding i mean working with demons it's this discussion is not meant to scare anybody it's just this is working with mammon but one positive thing of working with them is i do believe that they make this transition as painless as possible it's just some of the things you have to go through are naturally painful 
Yeah, and I think it, it comes from within ourselves, and that's actually something interesting that you just mentioned, because I've heard people ask before, well, you know, are demons going to attack my family or hurt my family members? And I've never had that happen. It's always been internal stuff with me. Mm -hmm. It's always been things I needed to change or face. You know, they did not hurt my family. Some people claim that they've had issues, but I really don't think those people are working with demons. Yeah, no, I don't. I've never had a problem with my family with demons. Never. Well, except for one, but that was something my husband asked for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It was his own internal struggle that he had yeah. to face. <laughs> oh, that's for another podcast, though. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, it's always been a very personal journey for me. And it's always been one where I basically really had to face myself. I've really had to face the shadows in my life. And, I mean, they've, they've influenced the external world for me. I've I've seen physical evidence of things shifting in my in my surroundings, um, mm -hmm. opportunities opening up. Yeah. Basically knowing exactly what I have to do mm -hmm. to get where I need to go now. Like before I had I had it in my head. I was like, I gotta do this, this and this. And I thought it would be great and wonderful. Now I'm like, okay, I've gotta do this and this part of this is gonna scare me. <laughs> it's gonna terrify me. And I don't want to do this, but I have to because I know I've got to get to this point because this is what Mammon's showing me I need to do. But that part of the journey is internal. It's me facing my own shadow. It's me facing my own, like, the, the inner sides of myself yeah. and really pushing myself to go forward. I've had that too. Where I've, I've taken a slightly different approach to it where it's been like, okay, I, I actually want to change this. I know that my mindset is not serving me. What do I need to do? And I, I almost prepare myself for sort of an inner destruction and transformation. Even with that, I'm still not ever always fully prepared for what goes on because you don't really see everything until you're facing it. And then it's like, oh, wow, I really don't want to deal with that. But mm -hmm. here we go. <laughs> oh, yes, I know those moments. It's like it happens and it's like, here it is. <laughs> the moment I feared. Yes. I'm here before it. <laughs> Now I have to take it. And you rise to it, you know? I mean, that's the thing. And it gets easier to rise to it. With, yes. each, with each thing, I mean, it gets to a point where you're, it's like, you're enthusiastic. You're like, I want the next obstacle because I know it's going to bring me what I want. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, the last, the last five years have been incredible. It's been absolutely incredible. I mean, yes. I have experienced so much. I've done so much. I've manifested so much. I mean, my life is an entirely different place than where it was five years ago. And it's thanks to Mammon. Yeah. You know, it's thanks to mammon. It's thanks to working with demons. It's it's thanks to their guidance. Yes. And I, I was told at certain points, you know, you are going to face horrors. And I, I did. They were horrors of my own creation, though. Yeah. And they were the horrors that were holding me back. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't them, you know, bringing on these horrors to torment me. It was them showing me this is what you have to do now. This is what you have to face. This is what you have to you know, heal in order to get where you want to go. And, and you know what, everything they've said would happen has happened. Everything they showed me that would happen if I did certain steps happened. Yes. Whether I resisted it or not, that's another story, but it <laughs> happened. Yes. yes. I know. I, I probably would be so much farther ahead if I didn't sabotage myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's part of it, I guess, is getting past the self-sabotage as mm -hmm. well. Working with him, though, he's brilliant. I mean, the conversations I've had with Mammon are just incredible. The wisdom I've received from him, the information, just how he sets things up, the things he says, what he shows me. I mean, how he views the world, it's so amazing. And I know I don't even grasp like a fraction of what he's talking about because he just understands things at such a high vibrational level. And when I start to, um, when I start to, you know, look back on different conversations I've had with them because I do write them all out. And I just, I look, I read them over again and I'm like, I did not see this before. I didn't see this. <laughs> yes. This is brilliant. A lot of people ask me, how do I communicate with Mammon? I have a few ways I communicate with him. I actually, I am clairsentient, which means I can interpret energies. So when I'm in communication with them, I, my third eye and my clairsentient ability has evolved to the point that I can translate energy vibrations into words. So they, I connect with them and I communicate and I sense the words that they're saying. That's one way to do it. I can also use um, a clair audience skill, which I'm developing. It's getting stronger where I work to hear them because I do work to develop all my skills. It, it's, you get, it's funny because with 
psychic skills, you can get really comfortable with one. Yes. You get really comfortable with one. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, well, I got to learn the others too. <laughs> it's like, but I'm so, this one, I'm so good with this one and it's so easy. It's like, all right, fine, I'll do the other one. Yeah, it's, it's so, so comfortable. That's another way. Another way that we do it, and this one, this way is pretty cool, is we we will actually channel and translate for each other. Yes. And what's really cool about that is how we get the similar messages. Yes. The same, almost the same messages. The difference is in dialogue, because you're clairaudient and I'm clairsentient, but mm -hmm. the essence of the message is the same. And another way I have done it in the past is my husband um, naturally can um, channel them. And he's got his own psychic skill, and he's channeled Mammon before, which is another fascinating um, discussion. What's interesting though is all the all the um, all the different ways the message is the same. Yeah, we do generally get the same things. It's the way that I communicate with him is primarily via clear audience because that is my strongest skill. But with him, I find the things that he says sometimes are so layered, I also have been developing my clairsentience and mm -hmm. I do sense things from him because it's like, well, I hear this, but there's something else here as well. So it's trying to get all the multiple layers of it and really figure out what he's saying because it, he can be a little bit complex at times. Mm -hmm. They really do speak in multiple dimensions. Yes. And yeah, translating them is like our coven. We'll also do like group sessions and we mm -hmm. will you know, we'll all be like, all right, what are y'all getting? And those sessions are cool too. Yeah, those are always amazing, seeing what each one of us gets or, mm -hmm. you know, if if we have a situation that we're dealing with and we're just comparing notes and it's like, well, what were you getting on this? Yes. And sometimes we'll hear or sense the same thing at the same time and be saying it and then... That's always entertaining. <laughs> oh, they're very entertaining. I love the group sessions. I love having that group dynamic and that group energy. It's funny because I was a solo practitioner for so long. I was I was always on my own. I was always, you know, just mm -hmm. working with them. And then I met my husband when I was 20, and I started teaching him about it, and he picked up the skills and we we shared the path together and he started learning and he started embracing and he started getting his own messages and he started connecting with them and working with them and really you know grew his own ability and really stepped into that and claimed his own power so then it was really fun working with him because then we'd we'd be able to share notes and then I met the other girls and I met you and then we all just kind of came together in this incredible dynamic and it's so neat seeing how we all get things mm -hmm. but yet how aligned we are yeah that's been a really amazing part of this is the is the community thing because one thing I mean when my life all fell apart at that point it was just me and my husband it was just him and I yeah and then from that, since then, I've met so many people. I've met so many different people who have different experiences, different ideas, and it's built up that energy. It's amazing doing it in a group too, because it is, it's one thing to do it on your own. And I always questioned everything, even mm -hmm. when I did get something from them and it would happen. It's, it's a completely different feeling to sit there in a room and have somebody say the same thing that you just mm -hmm. got. And it's really amazing. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's just it's, it's like incredible verification. Oh, and then yes. the things that you know, my husband got that we didn't tell him. Oh, I was yes. like, no, how do you know this? Those are always horrifying moments <laughs> because we keep saying, you know, you don't have any secrets with demons because, well, you got no secrets with them. No things I didn't want people to know, and then they are asking me about them, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Yes. Where did you get that from? <laughs> It's like, oh, they told me. Yeah, and then it's just like, wow. And you're there shaking your fist. Huh? <laughs> Resisting the urge to swear right now thinking about it because it's like nobody was supposed to know that. Mm -hmm. I think that's another part of it is just letting go of those inhibitions, letting go of that. I mean, you really have to be fearless. You really have to be bold and fearless yes. if you want to get out there and be successful. And that's one thing I've really learned is that when you when you drop those shells when you drop all the stuff that you were told oh you can't do this you can't do that and you just kind of step out there and be yourself a lot of good things happen from it yeah we really are restrained and held in a little box yes especially by fear mm -hmm. whatever it is we think we fear once you 
eliminate the fear or take away whatever it is that you're afraid of. It's very freeing. There were things like I didn't want people to find out about and I was, you know, trying to keep them hidden and then... I don't think two years ago you would have gotten on voice with me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Even a few months ago I didn't want to. <laughs> Speaking of that, some other people don't want to either, but... Yes. <laughs> We'll get them on eventually. No, I remember the last time. Okay, the first podcast we did, you just turned the microphone on and started talking, and I was like, oh, no, I really don't want to do this. But and then I uploaded it. Yeah, I know. That was a really scary <laughs> moment, too. Well, you went along with it. You didn't run out of the room. No, I thought I was going to run out of the room, and I started talking, and I'm like, all right, we're staying here. We're doing this. Other people have run out of the room. They're like, no, nope. <laughs> I just, just run out of the room. Completely silent. You hear the door shut. So that's not much of a podcast. We do have podcasts like that. <laughs> like, that will never be uploaded. Yes. Like the outtakes. Akelta talks to herself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. I'm sure everybody expects that. <laughs> I fully accepted that people are going to think I'm insane. Yeah. I had to get used to that. I'm pretty yes. used to it now. I'm sure some people do. I'm sure some people listen to this and go, crazy schizophrenic girl. <laughs> I mean, you know, that that was another thing, just accepting, you know, I am who I am. I can't really be anyone else but me. Why should I try? Why should I try to be anybody else but me? Exactly. This is who I am, raw and unfiltered and just, you know, take me or leave me. Exactly. That's where I'm at at this point now after working with demons for several years. It's It makes life fun when it you're does. yourself, when you're just able to just be unfiltered like that. It really reveals different layers of yourself. It really reveals, you know... A truth. There's a, there's, a, there's a sincerity and a truth to it. And it's, I think it's really one of the calls of the left hand path is to experience that sincerity of self. Yeah, I think so too. And I, I love when I see other people that do it too, because it's just, it's such an empowered place to be. And going from where I was to where I am now, the mm -hmm. difference and just the way that it feels, it's, it's amazing. Well, I mean, your, your story is incredible. I mean, you, and you should, you know, I know there's probably elements like that you might not want to talk about yet, but a lot of the things that happened to you, I mean, and just your story. I mean, it could be so inspiring to people who are in the same situation as you. Thank you. Yeah, I have to get all of it out there. I've tried to share bits and pieces of it, but yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I... In time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In time. <laughs> I know it's been, um, it's been quite the journey. I've walked a lot of it with you. Yes. I know we've had the nights where I've, you know, been I've been up worried about you because I didn't know what was going to happen, and yeah, yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> when you leave an abusive relationship, it's just yeah, interesting things happen. <laughs> yeah, you know, they that was another thing that was so amazing. How fast they manifested! I know the demons did that because just how everything came together for you yeah it was like they were right there with you guiding you and helping you and getting you out I mean you got you know you were able to you you had all the openings to set it up so you could leave I did because well they kept I mean I could hear them and they were like you need to get away from him and I was like I can't leave him I cannot I can't it was it was my entire world I couldn't even drive at one point I was unable to get into a car and drive myself. Isolation. Yes, because I was so afraid. The panic attacks were so bad. And they said to me, you have to leave him. And I was like, I can't. And they're like, as soon as you decide that you want him out of your life, say the word and he'll be gone. And then I did reach that point. And it took that me. That was a beautiful day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was right before actually I came on vacation to Vancouver. I decided I was going to leave him and I was like, well, I can't do it before I leave. So after I got back from that, um, it took me two weeks to get out of there. The, the day I got back, I got back really late at night. And the following day I went and found an apartment and they cleared me in like an hour with my credit check and everything. And they're like, okay, you're good to go. Yeah, that was amazing. It was. And in two weeks I had everything lined up you know, whatever I could fit in my car, which wasn't much. I had no furniture, like I said. And then I just, the first night you slept on the floor. I did. I slept on the floor. 
a couple nights and then I went and got a bed. <laughs> Actually, I think my mom brought me a blow up mattress. <laughs> but yeah, it's insane to look back at that. I mean, and I just, I felt so much peace. Even though I was in an apartment, it was completely empty. I was on the floor with blankets. I had the cats with me. And I was like, I don't have any furniture. I don't have any stuff except I brought my altars with me. I did bring, like, I think I had one altar table and something else, but really One of them was mammoths, wasn't it? <laughs> no, I bought that after. Oh, yeah. Because I was like, I have no furniture. I have to go find furniture. And then I got to... Um, this outdoor market and I was like wow those are beautiful tables there's actually a set of them another one is for a different dark lord that I work with but yeah that one I was like wow that that would be perfect for mammon oh I love them I'm looking at them right now yeah we're they're sitting beautiful. in the room with them they're gorgeous <laughs> I know. Uh, it's funny. We can't do these recordings from my house. I've got two kids. One of them's five, one of them's two. So the house is always noisy. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be doing recordings <laughs> and hear a shriek in the background or a crash. It's like, <gasps> oh no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're good kids. They're just very, 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 very high energy. <laughs> it's just the age too. When they're mm -hmm. that age, well, kids I think maybe are always loud. And I love the tables. Yeah, they're really nice. And no, I didn't have them when I left. It was so funny, too, how you set up Mammon's altar, because you just, it was just... I had everything in a box. I didn't even know I was doing it. I just was like, oh, this table is perfect, and I have no furniture. And then the price was so good, I was like, all right, I'm just going to get it. Because it, it was a custom-made table. Well, two custom-made tables. But, yeah, I brought it home, and I was so excited. I put everything on it, and then, like, a day later, my life just took off and everything started crashing <laughs> I was like what are you what do you really want to do with your life do you really want to be an engineer because here you can be the top the top level of it well and then come to find out that when I when I announced my two weeks notice my my manager was devastated he was like we're gonna make you a lead engineer and I was like oh, I didn't want it <laughs> at that point at one point I did want it but after going through everything I'd gone through I was like yeah I can't that is another thing that I really learned from working with Mammon was what do I really want to do? It's funny because I asked you that question because he asked me that question. Yes. He actually did. I was so devastated with everything that happened when my life fell apart. And he actually, one during one of our sessions, was like, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. what do you want to do with your life whatever you want to do you need to focus on that you need to stop giving your attention to things that don't matter you need to stop focusing on things that you don't want and you need to focus on what you want to do and he well he gave me no other choice mm -hmm. the only time I ever I ever got a head in during that stage was when I focused on what I wanted to do and it was painful because it was scary because I'm like you know you, you have a thoughts right here I'm gonna lose my house I'm gonna lose this I'm gonna lose that mm -hmm. you know all oh, this loss all this like you know this fear and it's like all right I gotta focus on what I want I gotta focus on what I want I've gotta you know I've gotta put up the, the the tough front and it's interesting because I I had no help at that time it was like it was set up so that there was no way I could get any help from anything mm -hmm. I had to do this on my own yeah and that I mean that forged that 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 forged something in me mm -hmm. that forged the diamonds in my soul <laughs> the pressure that I was yes. under it's like <laughs> I'm under so much pressure I'm gonna turn into a bloody diamond <laughs> if it kills me <laughs> no but he is so worth working with I mean if you really want your life changed Mammon doesn't just like he's a he's the demon lord of wealth and abundance and he is incredibly powerful and incredibly brilliant and incredibly wise but he's not just about you know actually I would say I'd say he's not the dark lord approach if you just want money handed to you yeah he works on the mindset he works on manifestation he works on you know teaching a man to fish versus giving him a fish yes like he really he really puts you through you know the iron he teaches a lot of really good life lessons too like he, one of the things I've really had to learn is setting boundaries with people, with myself. And, you know, I've had situations where there's people who have been, you know, really horrible to me and pushed my boundaries. Mm -hmm. And they haven't been nice. They haven't respected me at all. And Mammon's basically been like, get rid of them. 
He's like, remove them. Remove them from your life. Yeah. doesn't matter where they are. Just get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Get rid of them. He's so good at that. He's so good at just coming in and laying it down and being like, you do not deserve to be treated like this or this way. Do this. Get rid of them. Just cut them off. Yeah, I've noticed that too, working with him. It's like, what is this person in your life for? How did you manifest them? That's what I had to look at too. Mm -hmm. What did I, what was, what were my beliefs that led to this person coming into my life? What did I do to bring them to me? Mm -hmm. And then not only getting rid of that person, but then fixing the mindset or the, the subconscious thoughts or whatever it might have been so I don't manifest somebody else like that to replace them after I remove them. That is one thing I had to learn because I kept manifesting the same type <laughs> of person and I kept getting into the same situation. I was so frustrated. I'm like, why does this keep happening? It was like the same story, different set of shoes. And Mahmoud was like, well, you're not fixing the root problem. Exactly. You're not learning the lesson here. And if you don't learn the lesson, you are going to keep repeating this until the day you die. Mm -hmm. That was a scary thought, actually. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to repeat this. And he's like, he's like, all right. So he laid it out. He's like, if it's getting worse, it means you're giving into the pattern more. You're giving into the, the energy and the behavior more. So for a time, it did get worse. I remember that. The worst one was the hardest one to get rid of. It was the hardest one to get rid of. And then they've been progressively getting better. Yeah. Further away, more distant, you know, less of an impact on my immediate world. Probably I still give too much attention to things. It's because I'm really, I'm hyper analytical. I analyze everything. I, I look around <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, I analyze everything to death, which is another thing I've had to learn to stop doing. Yeah. I have to stop paralyzing myself or slowing myself down by overanalyzing things. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot about energy vibration too. Where Where is my energy vibration? What am I attracting to myself right now? Mm -hmm. Because I've had weeks where it's just been a really terrible week and it's like, well, what am I doing? Why does this keep happening? And, you know, what it, do I believe something that I'm not realizing? What energy am I putting out that's drawing this to me? Mm -hmm. And... There have been times where I've been in a really high energy vibration and something would happen, you know, I, I'd make a mistake and I'd sink so fast that I'd immediately manifest somebody. Somebody would just show up that fit what I was trying to change and I was like, <laughs> all right, I have to get out of this place now because that's, that is like a huge red flag. It's like, okay, I am not where I need to be mentally. I need to get out of this and get back up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, the... It's so amazing. Like when you actually tune into the energies, you can you can actually see how things, how your actions, how your feelings, how your vibrations are influencing and creating the world around you. That's that's a new thing that Mammon and I have been working on. Mm -hmm. Is he's been showing me how to really influence my energies to shift the energies around me to manifest things I want. Yes. Like the new manifestation skills that he's been teaching me are just amazing. It's amazing how fast they work. Like, I mean, right now, I love where I am right now in my life. And I, okay, yes, I do want it to get better. I do want it to keep growing. I'm really looking forward to this year and the coming years because it's just, last year was amazing. There was so much growth. There was so much abundance. It was just amazing. And this year, it started on the same thing. Yeah. Except, you know, I've set an even bigger goal, so now I've got to face all the new things. But I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it because I know that it's leading me closer to what I want because I've seen the results of it. It's like, all right, I did this before, and I started to really get what I wanted. Yeah. It's really hard in the beginning. When yes. you start working with Mammon, that's when it's hard because you don't see any of these results. You don't have the track record. You just have this demon telling you, oh, you're going to do this, this, and this, and this, and then everything falls apart. Mm -hmm. everything gets destroyed and you're like wait I listened to you why is this happening yeah and then he's like well you know keep going so you have to have the faith there yeah faith is a huge component of you have to have the faith to keep going that was really big for me in the beginning too because it was I was trying to get the house out here I was trying to still survive the job that I was in <laughs> and it was like they kept dumping more work on me and I had to move things around trying to get out here to look at houses and then getting approved and just that's you know kind of a pain anyway I think but just having faith and pushing through it's like well where, what do you want well where are you going to put your focus mm -hmm. are you going to focus on the fact that this failed that this didn't work out how you want it to or are you going to go back and make it work and that's that's another lesson 
it never works out how you want it to. No, or how you think. You always have this out. perfect little thing, system. It's going to go like this, this, and this, and it's going to be great. No, never happens. Oh, never no. happens. There's always that wrench that gets thrown in the machine, <laughs> yes. you know, crashes everything. I think like what you said earlier, too, a lot of people just think that they'll work with Mammon and he'll be handing them things, and he's not like that. It's Oh, no, he's not like that at all. No. No, he's not like that at all. He pushes you to learn. He pushes you to do he pushes you to really succeed and to really, you know, go forward. Yeah, because a lot of people are like, well, I just I just want a million dollars. It's like, all right, well, how are you going to get the million dollars? Mm-hmm. What do you, how is that going to come to you? And it's like if it was just that easy, then everybody who worked with demons would have a million dollars because, mm-hmm. or whatever else other people But want. everybody that works with demons can do it. Oh, they, they can. They can do it. If they're willing to listen to them, if they're willing to, you know, follow their guidance, they can do it. And they do give rewards, I mean, when you do things. Yeah. I've gotten incredible. I've had cash. I have had money just appear out of nowhere. <laughs> yes, I have too. had money. It's like, oh, why does my bank account look like that? That looks amazing. Yeah. I like that number. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have had this happen. Yeah. And it's because I've followed the steps and I've done what I've, what I needed to do. Yeah. You know, I've followed the process. It's nice, you know, when you have that track record. Mm-hmm. That's when, I mean, if, in the start, you have faith. You have to have faith. You have to have faith in it. And I know this sounds very, I hope this doesn't sound preachy. It's not meant to sound preachy because <laughs> faith can be anything. If you have faith in yourself, it can be faith in, you know, your abilities. It can be faith in your skills. I mean, faith doesn't have to be a religious word. It's, it's just a word where you have to trust. You yeah. have to trust in yourself. You have to trust in whatever you're working with. You have to trust in the system that you're following, yeah. So that's, I mean, whether whether that system comes from demons or it comes from a book or it comes from angels or it comes from, you know, whatever you're working with. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people work with both. I'm more of a demon person. Some people work with fae or other um, spiritual beings. When you trust in that system that you're working in, it really takes that leap of faith in the beginning. Because you do not have the results. You do not have the experiences. I mean, from where I am right now, I have seen the results. I've seen what happens when I trust them. I've seen what happens when I don't trust them, too. Mm-hmm. I've seen what happens when I try to take matters into my own hands and think <laughs> I know best. Yes. I've seen that happen, too. <laughs> it's always it's disaster. Like, I'm going to do it like this. Yeah. Well, you can do it like that. <laughs> Falls flat on face. Yes. <laughs> well, that didn't work. Yeah. I've done that, too. Stubbornness. Mm-hmm. Pure stubbornness. We're all stubborn in yeah. this coven. Yeah, I think it's it's a prerequisite to be in the coven. I think so, to too. I think you have to kind of be stubborn a bit to do this. Because you, you get hit with so much stuff. You have to be so stubborn to be like, I'm going to do this. I don't care what hits me. Yeah. It's like you have to be so stubborn that when you get hit and knocked down, you just get right back up and you're like, I'm going to go forward whether you want me to or not. Stubbornness is a good thing, I think. It is. And I have also found that. Listening to them versus doing what I think I should do. Every time I listen to them, it goes so much more smoothly. I've actually been there. I've been like, why are you not listening to them? And you're like, <laughs> because. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm doing it this way. It's, it's like, like you, you know how this is going to end. You know what you need to do. You heard them. You <laughs> told me what they said. Why are you not doing it? Because. So, sometimes I need to hear it a couple times. <laughs> sometimes I, I don't know why I do that. It's uh, Maybe it's self-sabotage. <laughs> Now, my original point, though, is once you have a few experiences, you can build on that. Mm-hmm. You can go forward on that. You can be like, you know what? I know this works. I know listening to them works. I know following their guidance works. I know I know what I'm capable of, and I know what I can manifest, and I know what they are capable of helping me with. Like, we'll probably end it here because we've been talking for a while now. Mammon, he's a great demon to work with. Highly recommend it, especially if you really want your life completely changed, yes. turned upside down. Yeah. You'll get what you want in the end if you listen to them, but, you know. Just remember, listen to them. Yes. <laughs> listen to them, follow their guidance. Actually, it should go with working with any demon. Yeah. Any demon that you choose to work with, that you really choose to seek guidance from, listen to them, follow their advice, hear what they have to say. Because a lot of them, they see things that we don't. They see the dimensions, they see the layers that... We are blind to, and they can help navigate us and guide us through that. So until next time, thank you everybody for listening.